Hi, I'm Ruth from the Brighton and Hove Food Partnership. We're a non-profit organisation and our goal is for everyone in our city to have access to healthy, sustainable and fair food. We've been working in networks for over 20 years and in this film, we share our five crucial ingredients for creating a healthy network. Number one, having a parent organisation. One of the ingredients you need for a good network is something to hold it all together. Uh, maybe thinking of it as the pan, if your favourite recipe. Um, now that could be a group like ours, the Food Partnership, that takes on that role. It could be an online community, or it could be a self-organised group of smaller organisations. One of the things to think about when organising a network though is actually who's going to do it, because it does take time and it takes effort. And those aren't always the skills that people in the network might have. For example, you might be great at making compost, but not so good at organising the meetings or arranging the times that people get together. Two, having a terms of reference that anchors the network together. Hey, my name's Rosie and I help to coordinate the Green Wellbeing Alliance, which is a network of organisations that provide therapeutic outdoor activities. A few years ago, we decided to join together to become an, an official network. Um, we came up with a set of aims that help to unite us and define our group. Differences and variety in the network are a good thing, but when challenges do arise, the shared understanding of the purpose and aims can help to navigate a way forward. Having a term of reference ensures that the groups that join have enough in common for it to be worthwhile. If anyone could join the network, it would dilute its purpose. Shared identity is important for our network because it can help improve uh, funding opportunities and recognition. As a network, we can apply for bigger pots of funding. Um, we can also pull our data on how many participants we've supported, um, which helps to tell the story in a more cohesive way than lots of little organisations telling a similar story in different ways. Number three, having a space for peer-to-peer -peer support. I think the Emergency Food work Network really benefit from coming together in a, in a shared space because they can meet with like-minded people who are um, facing the same challenges as they are and the being able to take a step back from the very all-consuming um, projects that they're running to, uh, to meet and share challenges with others that have a unique understanding of where they're at is just so helpful. The network really appreciate the in-person meetings and when given the option of being meeting online or meeting in person, they unanimously choose to meet um, in person and to the point that we now run out of chairs at our network meetings because so many people turn up to them and we find that there's lots of sharing challenges and inspiring ideas that happen but also there's lots of chatting and an opportunity to just unwind a little bit and talk to someone that really understands what you're what you're dealing with as well so they're extremely well attended and the projects just really enjoy coming together so I think one of the uh, real benefits of coming together is that you, you come into an environment where it's okay to ask for help um, and just to be really honest um, with each other about that and um, because the rest of the network know exactly what you're experiencing um, they it's a safe place to ask for help and you're more likely to get some kind of response in that in that kind of network meeting. Four, having a clear idea of the bigger picture. Networks allow us to take local place-based knowledge and build an understanding of something bigger and that's true of a network that I support, am supported by and work within, which is the Emergency Food Network. This is a network made up of over 50 projects who are committed to addressing hunger and poverty in our city. Many of these food banks, cafes and community shops began as a grassroots response to the needs of their local communities, which they understand better than anyone. The Food Partnership also collects together their experiences to help understand citywide patterns of food insecurity and how this relates to the national story. Our annual survey on the state of Brighton's emergency food support system puts the individual struggles of our projects into a national picture of worsening food inequality. This gives us the grounds to call for action on this on multiple levels. For me, when I'm answering the phone to someone who's reaching out, needing the support of a food bank for the very first time in their lives, uh, the network allows me to reassure them that help is out there and they're not alone.